It's indeed a privilege to have the IVF specialist and renowned gynecologist, Dr. Kanti Vansal with us. Welcome to the studio, ma'am. Thank you, Ashish. Ma'am, we'll be today discussing about the topic on troubleshooting in assisted reproductive technology or techniques. Ma'am, about this topic, what is your opinion on managing equipment failures in ART techniques? I think it's a very nice question that you have asked because as far as assisted reproductive techniques are concerned, you know, we have several troubleshooting issues that we uh, come across in day-to-day -day practice. And uh, this is one of the most important uh, aspect as far as the equipments are concerned. In ART, we have uh, personal uh, problems like the people working there. We also have lab problems and a major part of uh, ART also comprises of lots of equipments like we have you know the incubators we have the co2 incubators and also we have the stereo zoom microscope we have um, the micro manipulator and we have uh, centrifuge machines also uh, so many microscopes machines etc and then even if one small machine goes out of order like for example there's a simple machine which is the you know uh, aspiration uh, suction machine for the uh, removing of the um, follicular fluid of uh, the follicle wherein there is a oocyte which is inside supposing you are in the middle of an IVF cycle and you're retrieving the oocytes or you're doing an ohm pickup what we call it uh, popularly and suddenly the machine stops the um, suction machine stops so what do you do? Similarly, supposing you have a carbon dioxide incubator and carbon dioxide incubator is very necessary for these gametes, uh, maybe sperms or uh, uh, you know the oocytes or even the embryos, they do not survive if there is no proper amount of uh, carbon dioxide, the pH is not maintained etc. So supposing there is a sudden uh, temperature uh, dips in because the electricity is gone. So, how do we manage these various uh, failures of equipments? The best thing that you can have as far as equipment failure is concerned is have a backup of all these things in your laboratory. Backup is very simple. Instead of one suction machine, have another one. And instead of one incubator, now we have different, different types of incubators, you know. Uh, so, you can have two different types of incubators or even if you are very fond of one particular type of incubator, have the same one, another one. Supposing you are a new practitioner, you just, you don't have that much of, uh, you know, uh, the cost is maybe a matter to you, then you have to have good uh, supporters for you, like good, uh, your friends who are other IVF specialists who are in the same city for quite nearby and they are ready to give uh, help to you by supplying the instruments or equipments etc. Now coming to the uh, sudden uh, you know stoppage of electricity or such issues, you should have a generator in your hospital and also inverter system. So at any given cost, they, the whole equipments and everything should be running very very nicely and meticulously without any stoppage. Supposing you are doing a batch system then the problems are less because within 3-4 days the whole batch is over. But then when you are doing a day to day or uh, over the year uh, if you are doing uh, regular cycles then you need to be more and more careful. So ma'am apart from the equipment failure issues or uh, you know some technical issues with the procedure, any concern about the absence of personnel working in the lab can create over there? Yes, it has, so after all we are human beings and human beings uh, we have some problems like which come unseen or untold you know and so the uh, embryologists who are working with you, the nursing staff who are working with you or you yourself being an IVF specialist, supposing you fall sick. Supposing my embryologist is coming and she meets with an accident, I hope not. But as we are discussing, I am just telling you all the you know, most negative parts of all these things. And um, supposing a, 
you know, we have to think of so many aspects. This is technician who is not happy with you and then maybe, you know, he, he gets an evil mind and thinks, okay, let me not go today. Let's see what happens in the lab. So to overcome all this, we have again here as far as the persons involved in the IVF lab also, we should have a backup. Now having backup with personnel is not so easy because we don't get so many trained people. So once again, we can have uh, people who are working in a different center. We can have some, you know, negotiation and we can have, okay, I will send my people. If your son are there, you can send your people, something like that. Another very good uh, method to, uh, you know, solve this problem is you yourself should be knowing few of the important aspects of embryology, etc. So that suddenly if some, your embryologist is not there, you will be able to do the needful and uh, the whole procedure will not stop. I think these are simple measures, but I think this can be done. So ma'am, as you said, these are very simple steps which could be followed to tackle these kind of situations. But what about complications? What steps could be taken to prevent these complications? As well? Yeah, so uh, as far as, uh, you know, ART, mainly I'm talking of uh, IUI, IVF and ICSI. The complications are two. One is the multiple pregnancies wherein you have more than one pregnancy and the second one is the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. These are a clinician's perspective and then we can prevent them. Nowadays we can prevent multiple pregnancy by just putting just one single embryo or we can freeze all the embryos and then put it in the next cycle. That is one method. In case there is a multiple pregnancy, then we also have procedures wherein we can do, do the fetal reduction and just um, have uh, one baby. Then coming to the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, just don't give HCG, injection HCG, that is prevention or you can do one thing. Nowadays, we also have what are known as the OHSS free clinics. Ours is one of uh, them uh, because we are doing a lot of pioneering work from so many years now, more than 20 years. And then uh, we are also at par with the international systems of uh, doing all these techniques. And what we do is we do all antagonist cycles. And my advice to all the other clinicians who are doing ERT, please do not have, do not give, uh, you know, HCG to the donor cycles at least, why should those poor ladies who are donating eggs have ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome? So the first method of pro uh, preventing ovarian hy hyperstimulation syndrome, don't give HCG and have antagonist cycles. Another method is the, uh, you, uh, you know, cryopreserve all the uh, uh, embryos and then put it in the next cycle so that once again we are preventing the uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this brilliant scientific aspect on the method of ART as such. And thank you so much for being with us and thank enlightening you. us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashish.